If you give me your attention, we will begin this conference. My name is George Strimmel, and I will be your moderator. So I'll be coming and going and dashing in and out while this impressive list of people will talk about, well, why we all came here. And that is the matter of glaucoma. And it is so important that each and every one of us not only learn, but we then send out the message to others for so few people respond properly when they're told about glaucoma or even indeed know about it. To make it all possible, it does take dollars and cents and from good-hearted foundations. And the Harley Foundation is just such that. And to begin our program, here is Will Harley, who is a member of the board of that institution. <coughs> Thank you, George. Can everyone hear me back there, all the way in the back? My mother said I had a booming voice, so today it's, it's useful. I'm going to go back to this one. Yeah, this is the right slide. You can see all of the people that are involved, and I want to address that now in this welcoming opening. So good morning. My name is William Harley, and I have the pleasure of welcoming all of you to the 11th Annual CARES Conference here at Jefferson. And as you can see behind me, this slide, the CARES Conference, it stands for, at the bottom of it, committed to awareness through research, education, and support. And I do want to talk a little bit more about that. But first, maybe a show of hands. How many people are returning here for the second time to the CARES Conference? All right, very nice. All right, and then the next show, how many are here for the first time? Look at that, it looks like we've got more first timers. Well, that's great. So whether you're returning or you're here for the first time, I welcome all of you to this very unique lecture. And I say it's unique for one particular reason, because I have not found anywhere in the world where people of all walks of life are able to come to lectures and ask questions of nine presenting glaucoma specialists. This is really unique. I wish to direct right now your attention to the letter E at the bottom where it says education. And that's what today is about, is educating yourself about glaucoma. In the times past, I thought maybe I should ask the foundation to add another E word, empowerment. But then instead of cares, it would be caresse, which sounds like an Italian dish that we would have tonight. So it didn't work, and we're going to stay with cares. But let me speak a little bit about empowerment, and that's taking charge of your health issues. Just like you're being here today, it shows that you are empowered and accountable to your health issues. So I want everyone to give yourself a good pat on the back for doing that. And I don't mean to make light of it. This is very important. If more people like yourself took charge of their health issues, the medical community would have far fewer people to treat, and society in general would be healthier. So the importance of education, empowerment, and accountability cannot be stressed enough. We go on to the next slide. Oop. There you go. Now that handsome looking guy is my father, Robinson D. Harley. He was an ophthalmologist and he practiced at Will's Eye Hospital many years ago. He too suffered from glaucoma. And this disease knows no boundaries. You know, white, Hispanic, African-American, Haitian, it matters not. Although there are some groups that are more at risk and it can be passed in families, as you'll learn today, it's a devastating but yet preventable disease. He cared about this conference and he left money after his passing to support patient education. Today, as one of the directors of the fund, I'm here for the eighth year of sponsoring this conference. If my dad was here today, he would downplay his lifetime achievements, including philanthropy, treatment of patients, and his contribution to ophthalmology. However, he's not here today, and I get a rare chance to tell you a little bit more about him. He was born in 1911. He passed away in 2007. 
And if you're quick at math, it means he passed away at the young age of 95. He had a natural curiosity and he loved to teach. After medical school, he earned his PhD at the Mayo Clinic. And when World War II broke out, he was relocated to the Gorgas Hospital in the Panama Canal where he volunteered his surgical time to treat local patients without charge. After the war, he returned to Atlantic City to work with his father, Halver Larson Harley, uh, in Atlantic City. And after a short time, he took over his father's practice. But his real calling was teaching. So in 1967, he sold his practice. He moved to Philadelphia, and he taught at Temple University at St. Christopher's Hospital for Children, and of course, uh, Will's Eye Hospital, where he ran the pediatric department. My father's contribution to ophthalmology includes 150 articles medical articles, ophthalmic articles. He designed and developed new surgical techniques. He was a keynote speaker in medical conferences, and he volunteered around the world. In 1975, he edited and published the first edition of Harley's Pediatric Ophthalmology textbook, which is still in print and used in medical schools. But the funny thing about all of this, it almost did not happen. You see, at the age of 16, my father contracted tuberculosis, and he spent most of his year recovering. His grades suffered. The high school principal told his mother he was not college material. And at best, maybe he could learn a trade. My grandmother never gave up on him. He told my, she told my grandfather to get him tutored so he could enter college, and he did. He entered Rutgers University in the last couple of years of college. He discovered his love of biology and ultimately medicine. Up until then, he was gonna be a forest ranger. And I have to say to you today, Thank goodness, because had he decided to be a forest ranger, I would not be speaking to you today. Now, that's part of my dad's life story, and what that illustrates and is connected with care is, is he believed in patient education. He believed in taking charge of health issues that were his, and there's that empowerment word. He succeeded when so many things worked against him because he had the support of someone who loved and believed in him, in his case, his mother. So I'm hoping in your life you have someone who love and believe in you, or perhaps you have a chief supporter of someone you love and believe in. And my hope is that for, you, for you today to learn all you can and share what you learn here today with those you know and love. In this way, you're spreading the value of CARES. And I know many of you already do this, and that's one of the reasons why I continue to support the event. Remember, CARES is to build awareness Go back to the other slide. To build awareness through research, education, and my word, empowerment, and support. So one last thing, request, request, is that these surveys which you were handed out as you entered the lecture hall, is to please complete them and let us know what you liked and what you didn't like. Because through your feedback, we can improve this event and make it even better in future years. So with that, I thank you for being here. I thank you for taking in charge of your health care, and I hope you enjoy the conference today. Thank you very much.